Welcome back to Conquer Rants. Uh, today I want to talk about my top five video game controllers. Um, just to do something a little bit different. Um, so this might be a shorter one, but I'll try to go into, you know, a little bit of length on why I like specific controllers. Um, it might be controversial to some people, so I apologize in advance for that. Um, yeah, so with all that out of the way, um, the first controller I want to talk about, and none of these are really at, in any specific order besides maybe one. Um, PlayStation 5 controller. Um, this controller honestly shocked me the first time that I ever got my hands on it because after going from, you know, all of PlayStation's history of controllers, like 1, 2, and 3 being almost the same, and then 4 being a really weird in-between thing, like still a good controller, but odd. Um, this one here, like, blew my mind with, like, how well-built it is. It feels great in your hands, like, it's actually well-form-fitted like crazy well form fitted um kind of similar to an xbox controller i guess they probably took a bit of hint from that which is a good idea because 360 controllers are actually really good and so are everything that came after um but like it barely creaks when you twist it like it, its build is like so sturdy feeling you know what i mean and then also like the fact that there's barely any screws to take apart so like if anything goes wrong it's really easy to fix yourself in all honesty i've had one that i had to fix because i dropped it um and it was extremely easy to fix um the problem which was just a loose cable uh i mean it has haptic feedback i love that like the design of the controller on here like you can if you look really close you can actually see a little playstation um not logos but like the circle square x triangle thing that's like that's what the grip is on it that's what it feels like it's not just dots it's actually the symbols which is really cool i think um and obviously having the touchpad is still really cool and everything else the joysticks are great like it's just overall a really great controller and honestly i haven't had many problems with them i, um, I know some people have had problems with joystick drift and stuff like that but i haven't had any problems with that um so yeah playstation 5 controller great controller uh, up next, we'll talk about probably one of these controllers that I adore, Sega Dreamcast. Um, I know a lot of people probably don't like this controller and they might look at it and think, man, that's an ugly controller. It doesn't look very comfortable. But I always say the Dreamcast controller is like, it's an evolution of the Sega Saturn 3D controller, if you know what that is. Um, I might do a video on that separately. Um, but like it's almost a precursor to the GameCube controller in the way that it feels to hold because your hands kind of grip around the back of it really easily and the triggers are really nice on it. Um, the only complaint that I ever have about Dreamcast controllers is that the D-pad is like this really, it like is really raised off the controller. You can probably see it. Um, and it's really sharp. It's not a very nice D-pad at all. Especially when you come from Sega having one of the best D-pads in retro gaming just in general. Like Sega Genesis and Sega Saturn D-pads, amazing. Um, the joystick is pretty good for its time. It's not bad, it doesn't have rubber on it or anything like that, but it still has a nice grippy feel to it. And obviously we'll talk about the main feature of these controllers, um, the VMUs, which I guess aren't technically part of the controller, but um, for those who don't know, uh, VMUs were memory cards for the Sega Dreamcast that you could actually uh, obviously saved your memory too, but you could take games off of like specific mini games off of other games um, Like Sonic Adventure and you could take your chow kind of as like a virtual pet with you and you could actually play it on these They're the little tiny controllers themselves and um, When you weren't using them uh, For that they go in the controller in the top here and There's actually a screen on the controller then which in certain games depending on the game if they utilized it properly uh, would actually have some kind of data to do with the game. Like I know in a few sports games, it would show like your plays on the screen, like football games and stuff like that. And I know in Resident Evil, it shows your health, like your heartbeat monitor thing is on your controller, which is really cool for the time. And even with like the plays and stuff like that with hockey and stuff like that was really cool. Cause a lot of the times you'd be playing games with friends and they'd be able to look at your screen and see what your plays were and stuff. But like you had it on your screen. So that was always really cool. So yeah, the Sega Dreamcast controller, honestly, one of my favorite controllers of all time. 
nothing can convince me otherwise i just think it's a gorgeous controller on top of that um this is a millennium edition one from japan it's a really nice one but um yeah sega dreamcast is uh definitely next um okay so we're gonna get down to it this is gonna be one of two that are similar controllers that i adore and you'll notice a pattern here um of me being a sega fanboy but um the sega genesis six button controller um I, I had a Sega Genesis since I was a kid, and I never had a six button controller, I don't think, from the get-go. I think I had one of the three button ones, and I am not a fan of those. I think the three button Sega Genesis controllers are like too squishy, and I don't know, they're just uncomfortable. They're too big. Like, I don't have huge hands, and smaller controllers I always found more comfortable, personally. Which is funny after just talking about the Dreamcast controller, but uh, yeah, the six-button controller is a classic, honestly. Like, if you haven't used one of these, and maybe you're, like, a Super Nintendo fan, and there's nothing wrong with Super Nintendo controllers, they're great controllers as well, it's just so comfortable. Like, it's, it's like, the perfect, like, almost like a dog bone shape, I guess, to a certain degree, um, or a boomerang shape. But the D-pad on Sega Genesis controllers, like, even, even the three-button one is the same D-pad, pretty much. Just amazing D-pad. Like, not having... Just being, like, this circle more with the d-pad on it it's actually so comfortable like every time i go and play super nintendo after playing a sega genesis controller i miss having a sega genesis controller or that d-pad anyways that sega design um i wish that you could still buy like newer controllers nowadays that maybe aren't sega but like had a similar d-pad i wish more people would copy that style um this is obviously a retro bit uh re-release of the controller i do have original ones but just figured it was nicer looking for the video um okay next i had to put this one on the floor um i don't know if this counts as a controller because it's technically a joystick but it did come with the console so um the neo geo aes joystick controller i love this controller and i had to get it on ebay a long time ago and i had to win a bid on it and i remember being so excited when once i won it because i had used one before in like a game shop um and I use it for my Neo Geo CD. Um, but like these buttons, even though they don't have micro switches, are very nice to press. Like they actually feel good. They have a good amount of like, pressure. They feel nice. Um, but obviously the draw of this controller and it being well designed and actually very gorgeous looking um, is the micro switch joystick, which at the time, obviously a lot of consoles didn't have micro switches in their stuff. And it just feels great. Um, I know that the Neo Geo CD actually did have controllers with the micro switches in the controller buttons, and I think that's really cool. I've never used one. I, I don't own one. I would like to at some point, um, and maybe that would go on my top list for sure. Um, so yeah, Neo Geo. Um, great controller. Honestly, if you want to count this as a controller, it's honestly one of my favorites, especially if you're going for like arcade style games. Like, oh, so good. One of the best arcade sticks back in the day, definitely. Um... Last but not least, anybody who knows me or knows my my being a fanboy of Sega stuff um, will know my favorite retro controller. I always say retro because it's kind of hard to compare it to newer controllers, but when it, if I have a choice in having a retro controller, it's a Sega Saturn Japanese release controller. The American ones are horrendous. Sorry to anybody who loves those. I have several variations. I have a gray one, I have this one, and I have a uh, see-through blue one. But uh, I always love the color scheme of this one, even though this one's kind of yellowed. Um, this controller is honestly my favorite controller of all time, hands down. I love this controller. Um, of any controller where you're only going to use a D-pad, like pre-joystick, this is this is the way to go in my opinion, because it has the same D-pad as a Sega Genesis. It has a similar layout to the six-button controller to Sega Genesis, and I think that's why I love it. Like it's got that similar design, but it's just more angular. And it just feels really nice in your hand. Like, it's such a well-designed controller. Um, and, like, I I've bought... Uh, I've bought... <laughs> I've bought uh, USB versions of this um, to use with my computer for, like, games on there and stuff like that. And I've bought, like, other versions of this controller um, just because I actually adore it so much. Like, I have more, probably more of these than I do any other controller. Um, just so I can use them on various different consoles because I just love, I love using this controller. Um, 
But yeah, I don't really know what to say about it. I mean, it has shoulder buttons, which was pretty new for the time, from what I can remember. Like, a lot of controllers didn't have shoulder buttons. Maybe 3DO did, I think. Um, and But, like, yeah, it's, it's like I said, it's basically just an evolution of this controller. Like, this controller is, like, weird boomerang shape, but it gets a little bit more angular and is a lot more comfortable. Um, the buttons are a lot better. The D-pad is great. And then having two shoulder buttons rather than just, like, the one mode button that is on the... Sega Genesis 6 button. Um, but yeah, my favorite controller of all time, hands down, uh, Sega Saturn, uh, Japanese variation of the controller. I'm not sure if it came out in Europe like that. I don't think it did. Anyways, that's it for this rant. Uh, thanks for watching. I appreciate it very much. I uh, hope you liked the video. I might do some more like top five list stuff that's kind of just off the cuff like this because. Like I said, I'm not good at doing script stuff. I just like kind of just talking and being very natural with it as much as I can. Um, so yeah, if you like the video, please like and subscribe. I appreciate it very much. Also, uh, follow me on Twitch because we play retro games all the time. Um, currently, we're playing through Splinter Cell. Uh, we're playing. We were playing SOCOM the other night. Uh, I was playing Valis Three. Um, I mean, you, you know this. If it's on my channel, then there's VODs there uh, for my Twitch. So, yeah. Like, subscribe, follow me on Twitch. I appreciate it very much. And I will see you guys in the next rant. Woo!